Welcome back to my my uh, <laughs> my shack. <laughs> uh, it's been uh, kind of raining on and off a little bit, and uh, we're supposed to get some terrific rain tonight. And uh, from the weathermen, they say uh, insane winds. So you know. It blows in Oklahoma 30 miles an hour all the time, so I can't wait to find out what insane is. Uh, we've been doing some uh, primering, and essentially I've been just taking a wire wheel and going over this and uh, primering it, and I've just been doing it with a brush. Uh, and, oh my God, you're doing it with a brush. That's terrible. No, you know, you're really not going to see a lot of this in here. The stuff that I'm going to... Uh, that I'm going to do on the outside, of course, I'm going to do with a gun, and I don't have to. I don't have to clean a brush, or I don't have to clean a gun, you know. So uh, we're going to work on this section next, especially the rust. And um, what we need to do, essentially, is we have to paint this area right here. We have to paint this area under this molding and down the edge and all the way at the bottom of the door and up along the front fender, white first is going to have to get done. So we'll probably do that this weekend. Um, we'll, we'll paint that, uh, prep that, prep that up, and do what little body work needs to be done. And uh, because it's relatively straight, besides for that big goober down there at the, uh, at the hinge. And we'll paint this white. Now, why do you want to do this? this early in the game. Well, here's the deal. Uh, if you paint it white, uh, then you can tape it up because everything else is going to get blue. And if you if you paint the car all white and then you clear this, uh, you can't clear the other white until you spray it. And you can't tape this up until it, the clear on it cures really well or you'll peel it up you know you'll end up with problems so you've got about a 24-hour window for your urethane base before you can uh, before it's done before the solvents cooked off of it and uh, you can't spray any clear into it well you, you can you absolutely can you can spray it on it but it won't uh, meld into it like it should and uh, you'll have problems with the clear coming off so you have about a 24-hour window so the first thing what we need to do is paint these two sides the side and the other white and then let that cure and tape it off and then once that's done everything else is going to get blue so it doesn't matter you know we can paint panel by panel by panel kind of kind of a thing if that makes sense to you uh, I'll show you as we go along okay we're gonna process this up a little bit clean it all up uh, do a lot of wire wheel uh, I also need to uh, address this and see how deep this is. If this is deep uh, rust and it won't come off and it's pitted, we'll have to put a skim coat on there uh, of a little bit of body filler, just a little skim coat. So uh, let's get hauling on this. Okay, when we're working on our seams and such, we can wire wheel these like this and get into all those little crevices and stuff. Some of this is going to have to be hand sanded, but all little crevices and stuff you can you can get into with your wire wheel. And uh, on the flat surfaces, uh, I use my rigid orbital. I'm looking at this right now. It's not bad, but I think I'm going to put a little skim coat over it uh, of, uh, of uh, plastic, Bondo, and uh, probably after I prime it, we'll look at it and see. I get it sanded. All right, let's uh, let's get go cracking at this. Again, this being the underside wheel well, 
you know, you're not really going to see it. You want to make sure you scuff this up really good though, so your primer sticks. Um, we're going to, before we blow this, we're going to give this a quick wet sand, of course. You know, so, uh, so our base sticks to it well. And uh, just like that. Oh my god, you're painting it with a brush. Can't believe that. Oh, sacrilege. Yeah, I'm not cleaning a gun e afterwards either. <laughs> So you get the idea, we're just going to get a nice thick coat of primer on there. And we get a nice thick coat of primer up there, we might not even have to put a skim coat because the primer will be a filler. So that's what it does anyways, it seals. And primer is um, lacquer based and uh, lacquer is a wonderful solvent because it just gets into everything and it bonds very well to it sticks very well to everything especially if you're putting it on with a brush you know, so so yeah but uh, you know the, the flat sides we're gonna spray okay don't think that I'm doing this whole damn thing with a brush because I'm not so I'm just doing the uh, wheel wells and stuff we're gonna do this one and we'll do the front today and uh, that's about all I got time for, but by the magic of the camera, we'll, uh, it'll be just a second on your end. I got ambitious and I uh, primed all four wheel wells. <clears throat> so I uh, sanded them and, uh, and ground out the rust and that kind of stuff and, uh, and primed them. Of course, uh, I did the engine bay as well. So there you go. Uh, hold on a second here. I have to clean out my apparatus. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't think you gotta uh, get out your spray gun every time, you know. Uh, 99 cent paintbrush and, uh, and a Ziploc uh, plastic deal works just as well. Especially for something you ain't gonna see. You're up underneath, you know. Not going to see it, but I'm. I still want to paint it. I still want to put the coating on it, the whole the whole vehicle. Uh, while I was in this, uh, I, I there's some spots I have to fill in. Of course, this giant I don't know what I'm going to do about that. I think I'm just going to grind it all out and then do it smooth and and put my molding on it or my emblem on it. So, but I'll probably do it in fiberglass. Uh, when I base uh, things, I do it in fiberglass. There's a spot here that I ground out right in the corner, and uh, it's it's I ground all the rust out of it. It's all metal. So if I pack a little fiberglass up in it and then do a skim coat of bondo, uh, she should be just fine. I like using fiberglass for my uh, for my underlayment if I'm going any more than a quarter of an inch or you know, even up to a half of an inch uh, you know if, if you've got you know a dent uh, and, and you can't get it out and you, and you do uh, the first layer with uh, fiberglass or they make what they call Bondo glass uh, it's made by Bondo uh, it works really well uh, because it's a um, structural kind of, it has a lot more has a lot more oomph to it because it's got fiberglass uh, hairs in it. That's what I'm trying to say. And uh, then you can just do a skim coat of plastic over the top or, or your conventional bondo. Okay, well I'm getting out of here because by God the the uh, the fumes are insane. So uh, took off my respirator and whoo. Wow, it's crazy. Okay, well, I got to get out of here. Okay, it's probably going to be pretty hard for you to hear in here uh, because we have winds of 30 to 40 miles an hour sustained and gusts up to 65. It's just shocking that this is taking the abuse that it is. I mean 
shocking. It's just amazing. All right, what I have here, I went down to my local Ace Hardware store and I bought those for 92 cents a piece. These are gonna be my door screws. Now, you see something that's a little bit better than a Phillips? I do, five millimeter, a key, you see? So when you tighten them up, you can actually get them out. Wouldn't that be a novel idea? Yeah, well I'm gonna replace all those those crappy Phillips ones with these. So, I, you can't believe that that cost twelve dollars, but you know, you could buy the same ones on on uh, hang loose cool dude bugs or uh, Wolfsburg West probably for the same amount, but they're gonna have Phillips, they're not going to have a key. And I wanna be able to get them out one day maybe. Okay, we're gonna start doing some, some uh, some actual body work. We've got uh, that to fill in. We've got this spot back here to fill in as well. And I'll sh a couple other spots I'll show you. <clears throat> We're gonna have to uh, get boogieing on this. I uh, pray my shelter stays together enough that I can do this because I need to have this primed today. And I need to have it primed today so the, uh, so the, uh, solvents cook off of it. That way when I spray my base on it, it won't uh, curdle. Because you don't want uh, solvent from uh, lacquer thinner from, um, from primer uh, on that. Here's our, here's our prime job that we did yesterday with a brush. It looks marvelous actually. And uh, we'll do a real quickie on that with a, you know, some 180. Uh, some wet dry 180, I'm not really interested in sand scratches, I don't care because it's underneath the fenders. But the, uh, the primer that we're going to put on that, we're going to wet dry with 400. But I'll show you that later. Okay, let's get cooking. We ain't got a lot of time. We might not have any time. Time. 
That way you've got more time to work it. Now you gotta let this set up really good. It's not like Bondo. It'll peel off the side if it's if it's just slightly, you know, before you start sanding it. You gotta make sure it's hard. You can't you can't do it 30 minutes after like you can Bondo. You have to let it set for a couple hours before you go and start sanding on it. Or you'll have trouble. Now again. I like using this Bondo glass or uh, fiberglass. It's uh, it's uh, it's got fiberglass hair, in it. and it's uh, got a lot, lot better structure than Bondo does. You really want to mash that right in there too. Realistically, what would be great is a new hood. Now, does that need to be right up to the top? No. Because it's hard to work fiberglass, so you want a top coat of Bondo. But, structure, you want fiberglass. Now, we'll lightly grade that when it sits up with a cheese grater and then we'll put a, a coat over the top. Now a coat over the top is only going to be about an eighth of an inch. So you're not dependent on real thick mud uh, for your support because you'll get cracks if you do. The sides in this place are gesticulating in such a fashion that there's a breeze inside. <laughs> They won't hold, Captain. <laughs> She's gonna blow. <laughs> oh, God. All right. <laughs> ah, here's one of my fiberglass patches. Uh, if you can see, you have a little bit of uh, a, a little bit more that needs to be filled in. That we're gonna fill in with, with Bondo. Let's look at this bottom one here. Uh, we got this about right with a, with a hacksaw. I need to go a little bit farther in there and clean that out a little bit more with a hacksaw. Uh, but we have some small spots. This is low right here. We're going to put put about an eighth of an inch on this. This is not going to be a lot. Just a little bit of... I, I, I wouldn't go any farther than an eighth of an inch with Bondo. Uh, Got a little spot here I need to clean up underneath too. Uh, I'm going to hit this with the 80 grit and grind it down a little bit more. Uh, and then we're going to put some, uh, some Bondo on it, polyester. Uh, wow. Okay, so, you know, it's almost impossible to film in here uh, because of the, the nonsense that's going on outside. And, and again, I'm just, I'm just shocked that this thing's actually still standing. Just shocked, just amazed. PVC, my God, it, it's as strong as steel. Well, the sun's finally setting a little bit, uh, so the winds are only 25 now. Here's our patch, as you can see. Here's our fiberglass, and then our mud, and we. We have a few little low spots, little pinholes and stuff. And uh, what I'm going to use uh, is I'm going to use a uh, 
I'm going to take a thinner uh, that you mix with your uh, Bondo and it makes it very thin and it's, uh, it's just a top coat kind of a thing. We're going to just smear that on there and lightly dust it with the, with the uh, sander and it's going to fill in all those pinholes and such. Okay, so let's get working on our other patches as well. Uh, I have to sand these two also. Uh, after the big blow it finally calmed down and I still have my shelter. Uh, there's my gun I was using. Uh, I, I got out some guns and it uh, seems to me that I had bought this. Uh, this is a Cobalt uh, which is from uh, Lowe's I guess, I don't know. Uh, it's a pretty fair gun at a cheap rate. Probably buy a new one. Uh, you want to use a regulator on your uh, on your gun too. A water separator is another good thing. Uh, I have water separator on my uh, two, uh, two stage on my compressor so I'm pretty good. Um, you know, I'm not going to get a lot of water out of it. It's pretty good. Uh, you want to check that out when you're spraying. Make sure you're not spraying water. Um, this is my primer gun. Um, I'm just designating it for primer. Uh, so, you know, my clean out isn't all that great. It's fine. kind of funny. Last night I was spraying uh, primer out here and it kept coming out of the gun slower and slower and slower. And I was like, what the hell's wrong with this? And then it's like, oh, I didn't turn the compressor on. <laughs> That's kind of funny. So anyways, uh, <clears throat> I, I got some primer sprayed on here. So what you want to look for is all your little fur uncles and rest rings uh, in your, uh, uh, to, to fix up. Now, I'm going to go, oh, so far with this, not very far, okay? Because I don't care like a lot of people would care. Um, and here's the, here's the reason why. Uh, I'm going to park this in Walmart, and some fool's going to come up next to it and really, really scaz it up really bad. Uh, you know, smash it into there with their door or something. Something stupid like that. But you can go around it with uh, your magic marker and see all the spots you need to take and fix up. Now, these are under that clip. I, I painted. I taped this up here, uh, so remember my clear is going to go right up to there. Probably when I clear it, pro probably when I actually shoot it. Nah, nah I don't have to do that because it's, it's past there. Uh, I, I want to go past the mark a quarter of an inch, and yeah, I'm going past the mark a quarter of an inch where I'm, where I'm shooting it. I'm also going to want to slightly shoot inside here. Although, when I get done, I'm going to run a tape line here and a tape line here. And you want about an eighth of an inch in here where the clear is going to go because you're going to go over the top of that clear with blue. If that makes sense to you. I know it doesn't, but anyways. Uh, so we want to look at all our patches and all our spots and see if we can't uh, give them a little, a little what fur. And, uh, and and try to try to make this as nice as we can. There's a lot of little pinholes and stuff like that. You sand this, and uh, you should always run uh, two coats of primer. Uh, a lot of people just run one, but uh, I always try to run two coats of primer because it really helps you out with pinholes and the the small little imperfections. Imperfections. So we're gonna work on these two, and we're gonna. Uh, kind of step away from the uh, from the uh, other patches that I made. We're going to just work on both sides. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to fix all my little imperfections, and then I'm going to wet sand it. And uh, well, how am I going to fix all my little? I'll sand them and I'll put just a little bit a little bit of mud over it, and uh, and we'll sand that again. And you just want to work them all. Uh, to your satisfaction. And your satisfaction and my satisfaction are going to be two different things. So, you know, um, one thing's neat about this car is Beetles, is they have round surfaces, so you're not working with flat slabs. Flat slabs are the worst thing to do body work on because you see them real easy. The round surfaces, you don't see that bad. So it's, it's nice, the whole car is shaped like an egg, so it'll be easy to work. Okay, let's get after it. 
All right, we had some cracks here uh, that were appearing. And this is what I call a rusty trombone. And the reason why I call it a rusty trombone is because somebody really did you dirty. Okay, so essentially what they did is they drilled a hole in this. You can see the hole right, right there. Uh, in order to get their mud, uh, which, were, which they are laying on here in about three-eighths of an inch, which is, if, if you got more than an eighth of an inch of Bondo on your car, not fiberglass, I'm talking polyester, it's wrong, okay? If, if they're doing their job and pulling these dents out, uh, then they shouldn't have to do a rusty trombone on it. Uh, and the rusty trombone con connotation means that what happens is uh, since they drilled a hole in the body of the car, it's going to get moisture in it. And it, once it gets moisture in it, it's going to start to rust. And then, and then you're stuck with it because the body man's not doing his job. Man, I'm a glass guy and I know this. Come on. Some people. So we're going to lay uh, fiberglass. Fiberglass much more structural and uh, ground that out much more structural. And, and we're going to sand that down and put a coat of uh, very fine coat of mud over the top of it. Knock that down with a cheese grater just a little bit and then we'll get on it with the what's the word I'm looking for? The oscillates or whatever. Uh, sander. Um, let that dry faster or let that dry more than mud because uh, the fiberglass, because it has strands in it, it'll pull away. You don't want it pulling away. Get yourself a block. Uh, 3M sells one of these. Uh, don't go to Harbor Freight for your sandpaper and block. Okay. Uh, pony up for some good Norton paper and a 3M pad. And, uh, and we're going to use 320 on this or 400, something like that. Uh, something for smoothing. And we're just going to do it dry because we're going to hit it again with another coat of, of uh, primer. But, but we're going to do it wet this time <laughs> instead of <laughs> drier than this. It's just, just drier than a popcorn fart when it came out of there because I didn't have any air behind it. Uh, anyways, um, yeah, you just sand that and we're going to put another, another coat of uh, primer on there. And uh, then uh, we'll wet sand it. Uh, but you can find all the things that are wrong with it. Like there's a low spot right here that I should fill in, but I know better than to fill in because it's probably acting with this uh, hinge. Uh, I try not to use any filler around hinges or where they go because if you have a, 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 a problem where the door's sh not shutting right or something like that, it can damage your body work. But I, I think I'll be okay, but I'm leaving that alone. Like I said, you do your car your way, I'm gonna do my car my way. <laughs> okay, all right. I usually set my cheese grater to stroke on the downstroke and and I just don't like like this. I kind of make a kind of this kind of a pass. You can feel where it's high. It's high right at the back kind of. And at the top, you can see it starting to come off the top as well. Again, you want to really let your fiberglass set before you do this. I know it's a bitch to work fiberglass when it's set up, but you'll come out on top because you don't have uh, you don't have uh, adhesion issues. Uh, I laid a little bit too much over the edge, so I used a hacksaw blade like this. And you can also use it at the bottom. Clean up your, your bottom like that. 
Now, what this won't do is it won't give you a rusty trombone. And that's what you don't want because when you get rust in there, it'll crack. It'll crack your mud and then you'll have cracks in your paint. And that's why there was cracks there. You've seen them circle. So you got to fix that. You want to have a good foundation. A good foundation is always fiberglass. Metal's always the best. But, you know, I don't want to put panels on this and work them all and stuff like that. So it's not a big deal for me to have a little bit of filler in there. So I think we're okay. All right, I'm going to let that dry a little bit more. And then I'm going to hit her with the DA. Well, about an 80 grit. Smooth like the silk. Hey, what do we got hanging up here? Oh, towelage. That's not too bad. Got a little furuncle right here. See that right there? We can sand that out of there. You know what that was from? That's from me not mixing my mud up good enough. Not mixing the fiberglass enough. Make sure and mix it thoroughly. Right, okay, we got our second coat of primer on. And depending on how shitey of a gun you have or how bad you paint, uh, you'll have a lot of orange peel in it. Uh, the second time you sand, you want to sand with about 400. You get her wet. And you want to bop that down to where you don't have orange peel in it anymore. Now it's going to get real smooth. And that's what you want. And uh, you'll have to wash that off after you get done. But that 400 with water will really cut. So, if you take it down to metal in a, in a spot or two, uh, purists would worry about it, but I don't. So, okay, we're going to get this done on both sides, and then we'll shoot some color on it. All right, once you got that sanded, remember that any orange peel that you see in the in the in the um, primer 
will more than likely come through in the paint. So once you get that sanded, it should be pretty smooth, relatively smooth. How you know how you want it is depending on how you want your how you want your car. Do not handle this uh, product here once it's been sanded with raw dick beaters. Make sure you have gloves on. Uh, your hands will uh, exude oil, and the oil will get on the on the paint, and uh, you'll have trouble. It will uh, fish eye and bleed through and stuff, and you don't want that. Now, once you've got that sanded, and you take a freshly laundered towel, not one out of your grease rag collection, remember, no grease, okay? And you can wipe it down like this, okay? You wipe that all down really good and get that all out of there. Then we're going to go over it with a tack rag. I'm not going to be able to do that tonight because I got called out on another job late. And I just got back here and I've only got a couple hours of daylight. And the sun's going to set here in about an hour. And that means that I'm going to lose all my heat because it's only you know 45 50 degrees outside but it's you know I in fact I have the fan going in here because it's it's 75 80 but I'm gonna lose all my heat in in a, in, in a snap of the fingers and I have to have a controlled time for a couple of hours and I'm not gonna have that but it'll be it'll be uh, miraculously by by uh, by uh, modern technology it'll just be a second in the meantime we'll have a look at hazard freight's new paint gun hazard freight <laughs> harbor fraud <laughs> hazard fraud okay in a well you can tell it's a good one because it says HVLP on it <laughs> Okay, she's tied in there. Now, this isn't going to spray like you wanted to right off the bat, so don't just come up to your car and start spraying, okay, because it's not going to work like that. So it has a little tool kit and that. Hmm, clean immediately after. I thought I was just going to put it up in the cabinet for about a month or so. Uh, when you put this together, make sure you put some... Uh, some uh, reducer in it and slosh it around and stuff and squirt out all the chinesium that's in it, okay? Uh, remember this? I'm gonna shake that up. We're gonna mix up some white paint. I'm gonna put a little bit more reducer in it uh, and get myself about a quart because that's what it's gonna take to do those. Um, I have some clear and uh, this clear is four to one. So uh, one quart to one gallon and how are you going to do that well uh, we could get out m measuring spoons and tapes and and levels and and devices of weight and in measuring and no 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 I think what I'm going to use is a Dixie cup I've marked the outside of this so realistically if I put four of these with clear in it and one of them with hardener, uh, let me think here, four, one, that would be four to one. Okay, and then you mix it up, and you have to let that pop for about 10 minutes, and that is, you have to let it set for about 10 minutes, then you dump her in your gun. About enough time, uh, about enough time to clean out, uh, clean out your, uh, your uh, color, and uh, then you can put that in there. Okay, um, look, here's the deal about painting. Um, I'm not going to, uh, put my camera <laughs> in there <laughs> because because it'll be all fogged up in just a minute and clear coat on the lens is probably harmful it's already this camera's on its last leg I need a new lens because it's all dirty and uh, inside it so anyways uh, what I'm using is Omni uh, 270 and the MH 277 is a medium uh, medium harder hardener they have a slow hardener a fast hardener uh, I'm not in a big hurry, so, you know, medium's fine with me. 
Uh, so uh, let's get uh, motivating. Oh, uh, and I got a tack cloth too. The tack cloth, after you clean all that primer, and make sure you don't touch it with your fingers. Don't don't rub the side of your nose and then play with your tack cloth, okay? Don't do that. And if you have, change your gloves. Don't get any grease or oil or facial grease or anything on your on your on your project project that you're painting. Uh, so uh, oh, and we're going to use some uh, some uh, uh, funnels also, so with uh, screens in them. So when you pour it into the gun, you put a funnel on it, pour it into the gun, that gets all the big chunks out. Alright, let's get motivating. I've laid down my base coat. Seemed to work pretty well. And this is six Dixie cups and of hardener and a cup and a half, or excuse me, of clear and a cup, cup and a half of hardener. So we're going to mix this up. And we got about 30 minutes at about 70 or so degrees on our base coat. Now, your base coat, you want to hit that before the solvents escape completely. And you have about 24 hours to do it. And I'm going to let this pop for about 10 minutes. And then we're going to go shoot that. So that'll give us probably about a 30 minute time at about 70, 75 degrees where our solvents will cook off enough on our base coat to dry it. It'll be uh, kind of dry. The base coat goes on not really wet. It goes on pretty dry. And we're going to put two medium coats of clear on. Less is more on clear, I'll tell you that. Or you'll be running. Well, I come out of my little uh, DL paint in my car and I seen this. Focus. There's a huge piece of my fence that got blown down, so I'll have to address that. So since I seen that, I decided, well, if you, you know what you're going to be doing on Saturday. So I decided I would zap these real quick. And so I did. And uh, the Hazard Fraud paint gun uh, worked pretty good. We got a couple little runs. I got a sag right there I'll have to sand out. I can't see anything in here though when I'm shooting so. But uh, it seems to be okay. We can fix that you know. And uh, the whole situation was, remember I told you less is more. It's hard for me to do less. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, the whole thing about clear is uh, you just pour it on the car and then you sand it all off. <laughs> so I'll have to, I'll have to work on that. That's not a big problem though. In a couple of days you'll be able to cut that off there. And you won't see that because it'll be under the fender well. Besides, I'm probably going to sand that. Tape it off and it's going to be painted blue anyways. So all in all, it's uh, nice and shiny, of course. And uh, looks pretty good. All right, I'm going to get this one on the Gintner for you because I've got my work cut out for me tomorrow. But I've got my inserts painted white. All right. Thanks for coming out and uh, and supporting my channel and watching my tube. All right, see you guys later. Bye.